On April 6, 1974, 11 brave men crossed the burning sands into the Omega Psi Phi fraternity and forever changed the face of Clemson University. These are their stories.
my chapter, which was the Phi Alpha chapter, uh, asked me to serve as a chairman of the membership committee, now known as MSP. And of course, then they wanted me to serve as dean of the pledging process, uh, which I did do. And of course, uh, a committee was named to assist, and the committee was composed of uh, Brother Melvin Davis of Greenville, Brother William Clankscale of Five Chapter, and Brother Mark Williams of Five Chapter, who is no longer in our area, who moved out of our area. But he was on the original committee to work with Clemson Group. So we went there February 28, 1974. And uh, we organized young men that were there. And of course, they uh, decided they wanted to have the officers named at the first meeting, and of course they did. And an election, they elected Kenneth Brownlee as the president of the Lampardis Club. George Harkness was uh, named vice president. And the treasurer was Mike Keeson. And the chaplain was Sylvester Lee. Uh, so we met with that group regularly, and we would meet in the evening after classes were out. And of course, we went by the manual of the Lampardis Club, which required that they learn some of the basic fundamentals. Uh, at that time, we met all over the Piedmont. The meeting might be in Gaffney, it might be in Abbeville, and it might be in Anderson, or it might be in Seneca. But on one of those occasions, riding with William Clank Scales, he mentioned that it's time to get an Omega chapter on the campus. And he also said, we will need a sponsoring chapter. Well, he went to the administration of, Cap of Clemson University to find out the particulars of getting a chapter on campus. Now remember, we're only talking Seven, six to seven years after Harvey again integrated Clemson. So this was a tough road for, for Dr. Clank Skills to be known later. Uh, he went up to Virginia Tech to receive his doctorate. It was a tough task. William would go and meet with the administration and would come back to us and tell us about all the hurdles that we had to cross. Phi Alpha overwhelmingly endorsed the idea of supporting a chapter of Omega Sci-Fi on Clemson's campus. Me about Kazeta is the fact that Kazeta is blessed to be on one of the most popular campuses in America. Look what that football team does in bringing attention to Clemson University. As a consequence, Kaiser picks up a responsibility and uses his influence in many ways. And of course, I would love to see Kaiser reach out and bring in more outside African-American leaders to the campus, other than people who are known for their social movements, uh, movements that relates to Dr. Martin Luther King. Uh, if they could just reach out in the community and reach out and bring in people to the, that particular community, that would bring attention to Kaiser. And I like to hear it said on the television and on the radio station that Kaiser of Omega Sci Fi fraternity is sponsoring thus and thus and thus and so. And of course, that in itself 
would lend, uh, lend impetus to the growth of that chapter. Uh, I see in the future that Kaizena will take on this responsibility, and I hope they will. Twelve o'clock, you know, everything was over. Like you said, we, we went in there, ate breakfast, mm -hmm. ate or well, ate all that stuff, and then so then they said, "Well, now y'all be back, be ready, be at the armory by seven o'clock." So DC wanted to go get one of his friends who was going to school down at Payne College in Augusta, and as always, he and I was the one. We always rode together, and so we took out. Left campus on Saturday morning and left and went down to the pain. We got to Augusta and we stopped at the railroad track and the train was coming. And you know, I fell asleep. And I didn't know he fell asleep, but he fell asleep. The next thing we know, somebody tapping on the window. They said, Man, y'all come on the train, been gone about a half hour or so. <laughs> We fell asleep standing there at that train. Wow. Waiting for the train to go by. And in the car, we just so tired. We've been up all night doing stuff, you know. And uh, got ourselves together and we drove on across the track and went to the pain, picked up his friend, and came back. And we were wide awake coming back, you know. But uh, that was our famous, I don't know how long we were at that track. We, we could have been 5, 10, 15 minutes. I don't know. I guess some people in the back are trying to figure out what's going on, but they can see nobody moving no head or like that. <laughs> and that man or whoever knocked on the door and uh, woke us up, and, uh, and that was the story. <laughs> I decided to go to Clemson uh, after my father, who had wanted to go to Clemson back in the 1950s, was denied admission due to him being an African-American. He really emphasized and uh, really supported myself and my brother pushing us to uh, apply to Clemson. And so I did apply, we got accepted, and, and the rest was history. Why I decided to play Omega is a really funny story. Uh, my Classmates George Harkness and uh, Simmons in particular, I re remember, they were telling me about this meeting of, of a Lampardis club and said I should go with them and go check it out. I went to the meeting and the next thing I know, we were being inducted, me and, you know, we were part of the uh, Pledge, you know, Pledge of Omega. So, I mean, that's how it really began for me. I didn't really know what I was getting into, but I hung on in there with them the, the entire time. Uh, and so, uh, of course, it became a great experience that built the brotherhood and the camaraderie. But that's the real reason why I pledged. I didn't know what I was doing. <laughs> uh, influences about Omega Sci-Fi came from knowing that my father's brother, my uncle Leroy, Bobby Best, was a Q. Um, and some of the Qs I knew in South Carolina were Dr. Bubba Young. Dr. Aaron Martin and, and the like. And then my mother's brother was a Q also in Arkansas. Uh, but it was, like I say, my story is really funny because like George and Simmons and them was like big brothers to me. And I, I knew that they had been going to some meetings, but I didn't know what I was going to with them. They were like my big brothers. They said, come on, go with us. And next thing I know, I was in the meeting and we were, we were pledging. And, and what really was amazing was then my uncle, you know, he had to do what he had to do as far as being hard on me and everything. But I'm like, what, is, what the heck is going on out here while I was playing? But it was a good, it was a good training, good experience, and I'm glad I went through it. The Black House doesn't exist today. There's a road that they built through where the Black House existed. It was on the western side of campus, and it was a small little room um, that we were allowed to utilize um, and it was just you know a lot of black students were able to use that I don't I don't really remember the details about why the campus let us use the black house and why it was called a black house I don't even know why it was called a black house 
but uh, it was some great times there. And like I said, we did a lot of our learning. We, we practiced our steps there. We, um, we learned our poems together there in the Black House. We uh, learned the history of the fraternity there in the Black House. All, a lot of study we had to do was there in the Black House. It was a small little room on the west side of campus, right below the rest of the, uh, the fraternity and uh, dormitories uh, on the west side of campus. To Pledge Omega. Now let me tell you, you know, I came down when my brother was being initiated and going over into the fraternity. And I absolutely thought it was the funniest thing in the world. I, I, my parents really had kind of told me about uh, fraternities and sororities. And I came down and they did a step show and I thought it was just so funny. I mean, to see my brother, I thought, what is he doing? You know, what are they doing? And, uh, you know, as I found out, uh, what it was, um, you know, it, I became interested. It was not, I don't, there was no other fraternity on campus, I don't believe, so we really didn't have much of a choice. But the brotherhood that I saw with the, the older brothers that were there, I saw how they played cards, they had a good time, they entertained each other, told stories. We had an African african-american community and the fraternity was a great part of that so that's why i knew i wanted to be a part of that yeah. and see now i was known as uh, cc my brother was known as dc because he was from the district of columbia dc when i came down they called me cc for chocolate city uh you know years ago parliament funkadelic a group, uh, George Clinton, you know, uh, had the song Chocolate City, CC, so they called me uh, Chocolate City, called him DC, called me CC. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of how we got, but those were nicknames, nicknames we had, you know, on the campus. Sometimes you may hear us talk about the, the African American community on the campus as opposed to just the Omega community, but we were so close that the, yeah. that we intertwined right. and we supported each other. Um, you know, we were a big part of that campus. And big part. so that, that's kind of how it worked back then, you know. Mm -hmm. And we, we were the ones, the, the Omegas gave parties, you know, we would carry those speakers down to the, uh, what, what, what was that? F Lounge. F Lounge. Yeah. yeah. And we would have, you know, parties and uh, <clears throat> for the for the you know the black my lord black students on the campus and it was something you we really enjoyed. Again, like we didn't have, you know, so much of what, what they have today. So but we're proud of the brothers that's come behind us. Let let us know that we I mean let you, we wanna let you know we're proud of you. Uh, to continue something that was started by, you know, my brother, my blood brother, my frat brother, you know, started it. They were the pioneers, and we were just able to continue it. And to come down for the 40th is very important to us, and we're looking forward to it. And uh, we, we, we're hoping for a successful re uh, anniversary. Thank you. Hi. My name is Jeremiah Archie, born and raised in Greenwood, South Carolina, and I entered Clemson University in the summer of 1975 to go to summer school. During the fall of 75, I enrolled there and met a lot of nice folks, had a lot of fun, remembered the freshman football game, which was a tradition. And during that time was when I got to know some of the guys that I eventually found out were Omegas. As far as fraternal relationships and sororities, I knew nothing of fraternities or sororities prior to Clemson, other than the fact that I had an aunt who was a Delta, which didn't mean much to me because once a month, they would get together for their meetings. And when they had it over her house, it was kind of a pain for me because I cut her grass and that was the time that her yard had to be perfect. Other than that, pledging at Clemson was an interesting undertaking. I got to know 
five other young men because we were a part of the six million dollar man line during the spring of the, the spring of 76. I was number two on that line and my line name was Horse, which I don't remember why I got that name, but that's another story. Other than that, being at Clemson was an enriching experience. I met a lot of folks. Some relationships have lasted during the last 38 years, because that's how long I've been pledged, 38 years. And most of those gentlemen that I still associate with are Omega men. Some of them are crazy, some of them are animated, but there's some of them are a lot of fun. But the one thing that is common amongst all of us is we are brothers, we respect each other, and I always believe that we have our back, have each other's back. One other thing I remember, when I graduated from Clemson University, which made a lot of people happy, I came back to visit when you had a line and I remember one of the gentlemen being online was LeVanza. And I came into your lamp meeting and you gentlemen were there all nice in a row and all smiles. And you said the poem, if. And you guys said the poem and you knew the words, but there was something that LeVanza later said to me was, I spoke to you guys and explained to you that it's more than just words. You have to understand, you have to understand the meaning behind the words. And I explained that to you guys. And he told me later on that that impressed him and it helped him to put more of himself into his pledging and into his learning his materials and feeling them instead of just saying that. In closing, I guess I'm very proud of the fact that I am a member of Omega Psi Phi fraternity, especially Chi Zeta chapter. Congratulations to the 40th anniversary, to the mean 13 that went over and started this, and also to the legacy that we as a chapter have passed on. If you look at the roster of Omega men that graduated from Clemson, we've had professional sports athletes, doctors, uh, we have gentlemen in fields of industry all over. We're very proud of ourselves and we have the right to be that way and understand who and what you are and continue that tradition. Thanks a lot. Life for me ain't been no crystal stack. It had tacks in it, and splinters, and boards torn up, and places with no carpet on the floor. This bad, this bad. But, but all the time I was been a climbing, and reaching landings, and turning corners, sometimes going in the dark where there ain't been no light. So boy, boy, don't you turn back. Don't you sit down on the steps called you're finding kind of hard. Don't you fall now, for I still are going, honey. I still are climbing. And life for me ain't been no craftsman stack. But now I tell you what, Alpha, Beta, Gamma, Delta, Epsilon, Zeta, Eta, Theta, Iota, Kappa, Lambda, Mu, Nu, Psi, and Omicron, Pyro Sigma Tau, Upsilon Phi Chi Psi, and Omega. Psalms 133. Behold how good and how pleasant it is for brothers to dwell together in unity. It is like the precious ointment upon the head that ran down upon the beard, even Aaron's beard that went down to the skirts of his garment, as the dew of harmony, as the dew that descended upon the mountains of Zion. For there the Lord commanded the blessings, 
even life forevermore. Thank you.